world is half these red is global south blue is global north uh, there is one exception australia and extreme south we have australia is the part of the global uh, north rest and here we have an exception one more uh, as yes, uh, british colony uh, british territory uh, that is blue so the main difference between the global south and the global north is based on the government so now let's count why global south is poor you know that global north is rich global south is poor that's the main difference there are two reasons why global south is poor one is historical patterns and second is contemporary patterns of inequality let's first talk about the historical patterns if you see uh, if you see the map there is one thing you will find red is colonies and the blue are colonizers we have uk we have france we have portugal we have america so that is the historical uh, historical uh, patterns of inequality they came to our uh, they came to our country they took our resources and then now there is no color there is no there is no colonization now you are independent but still the mismatch of resources has existed and that has taken shape in the form of wealth between global south and global north all right uh, now let's talk about the contemporary pattern uh, of inequality uh, i will not go very far just take the example of 2020 2022 was the clear where when The difference of the global south and the global north was very, very visible. Uh, if you have been following uh, the climate negotiations, we had COP26 at Glasgow, UK. There was this big debate between West wanted to use the term "phase out" of coal, India and other global south countries to use the term "phase down" instead of "phase out." So you see, what's the difference between the national interest of the global south and global uh, north? Global north can afford. a uh, cleaner energy but we cannot we cannot go for expensive solar energy we still want coal to burn so that our power plants give us energy it will uh, undermine our uh, uh, energy uh, security so you see this difference was reflected in two other places first was media you see indian media was praising the indian stand that you know we did not make the best uh, uh, undermine our national interest in for coal and nickel and then the western media was painting india as a villain that india is uh, india is not compromising with their uh, policy they are uh, harming the climate and then this difference was also translated into academic state if you see the western scholars who were writing they were writing that you know india is uh, there are two kinds there is per capita and there is uh, absolute income. so in absolute income india is a bit poorer because we have 100 crore plus population that's a simple economics but per capita uh, pollution of india is Uh, below the global average. In fact, it is five times below the uh, modern best, global south, global north. Sorry. So this was the where uh, the entire difference between parties still exists. So here we have the opportunity uh, to uh, uh, here we have the opportunity to India has the opportunity to lead the global south. If you see uh, the, the uh, very significant development of the first two decades of the 21st century was what globalization. Every day we were talking about globalization, like open our borders and stuff. But now what is happening is globalization is at the end. U.S. is making out from the deal, said back out from the Iran deal. There are a lot of strategic uh, realignment is happening. For example, earlier uh, we used to see India and Pakistan together. It is if they have to do something for India, they have to do something for Pakistan. So there was this balancing act going on. But today we only see Pakistan and India. India is independent. We see India. As a third largest economy, the purchasing power today, India is pursuing an independent foreign policy in terms of Israel. And they used to uh, pursue with Palestine, Israel and Palestine, but now they are uh, pursuing an independent Israel policy. So these are our changes happening. In this change, the globalization is uh, is uh, is taking a beating. So we need a new avenue for engagement, and global South uh, provides a possibility of engagement. Where India can uh, picture itself as a or provide itself as a leader, and one more important thing is India and China is this platform of synergy in the global south, where India and China can act as a partner. So this uh, partnership in the global south will act as a long-term confidence building measures, which will in the long term will soothe our bilateral relations, bilateral relations between India and China. Now let's talk about the literature review. Uh, you see. The concept of the global south has uh, sociological roots. Uh, the sociological uh, sociologists like uh, Osho Monte, Robert Spencer, Maya Rajani, Lester Frank Ward. So what happened was uh, when colonialism started, there was this small year 
they did not have the lot of like that. This is here. So they get to know these uh, C trade rules. They find this big big comments. First, uh, they find that data foundation. So now they wanted something to differentiate themselves from us. So what they said that progressive. They talk about uh, if actually more honest. They use it on savage. That India is a land of savage. Uh, so this is how. It did not explicitly use the term global south, but they used trivial imbalance. And that's the root of the global south. Then they have ended up that we all know about Kensi, the Italian uh, scholar. He, for the first time, used it, uh, used this term south. Uh, in his very famous essay, Sin Fush, where he uh, used how the northern Italy colonized the southern Italy. And from there, the concept of uh, the uh, global south, which is a sociological concept, got a uh, nomic. Routing. So there was a sociological economic nexus between them, and then we have Raoul Pravis. Uh, he is a very famous uh, novelist of uh, the late 20th century. He belonged to Argentina. He was the one who systematically started the economic study. How still, you know, you know all I've heard about uh, Pony Kumar. He was the former president of uh, uh, Ghana. He wrote uh, our neoliberalism. His neoliberalism was based on Raoul Pravis. Now, what is systematically he with along with his like-minded Thomas he came, and there was we do not have the view of it. We had He told that you know the uh, the rules that we have set is uh, undermining the uh, development of the global south. You know we have this very famous uh, agreement AOA, agreement on agriculture. As you see, the blue box uh, subsidy is because of the global south. Otherwise, we would have green and yellow. So they are trying to control us because you see uh, we came in India. Uh, I, it's really not up to me to control anything because my partners are the priority. I won't say that you know you uh, you don't uh, so tell it because within is not my priority. That is your priority. Now you cannot set the agenda and say that no, we have to control that thing. Then what you are doing is you are undermining the development. You are what is my right? You are not giving me. So there that is. Uh, that's what Raoul Pravis. That was that was Raoul Pravis. What and then he left. They will call them savage. 
I mean, I have a cousin in US. Uh, he's from India in uh, Indian countries because his uh, friends used to uh, company and everything. Uh, yeah. So these are the challenges that uh, we will not, uh, we will solve patients with the global law. So this is uh, this focus study. My study will be uh, divided into three parts. Uh, the majority of the study will focus on the uh, historical thing, but basically uh, what I'm working is not me. Uh, there's a lot of literature on it. We have an app. Uh, non alignment movement started by Nehruji, uh, uh, started by Tito Nasir, uh, Subhadma. They all had this idea of how to liberate the minds. We have liberated the borders of uh, uh, our country, but we have not liberated the minds. We wanted to liberate the minds. The NAM was a response of India against the Cold War. We, we have the Warsaw Pact, we have the Rodney Nandro. So we brought NAM. That was global south. So my faith, uh, historical analysis of it. Then we also had in the 1990s. Uh, there was this NAM 2.0. So exit that also paid. Then we had the G77 uh, in the United Nations General Assembly where the Global South used to uh, using their United strength vote uh, in the General Assembly. So it paid a lead. Then we have this coffee club that uh, undermines the growth you know, of the Global South. So why all these uh, dangers in the group? And then we'll talk about the